<laughs> Welcome to another class, Pashas Vayakil. Today is a very nice class because today we're going to talk about investing. About what? Investing. Investing. Now, with, with investing, the the further you can leave the money sitting in the account, the more return you'll get. That's usually the way it is. You play you play around with the money. You know, the people who do day trading, you gotta have nerves of steel. From the only day trading is, you know, that's what's, most people. You put it in a you know, mutual fund and you say goodbye and whatever. You hope for the best. You hope for the best, mm -hmm. because usually life has taught us that when you, when you invest, not for immediate gratification, the return is a lot, are, are a lot greater. Usually. And there's the famous um, Stanford experiment with the marshmallow, right? The famous marshmallow experiment. They put the one marshmallow in front of the kid, and they said, "They said if you wait 15 minutes, you'll get a second marshmallow." So the people that the kids that were able to delay gratification, they were able to um, control themselves. They were found to be a lot more successful later on. Some kids have to have it now. I mean, I'm not a big marshmallow guy, but you put it between two crackers and some chocolate, nah. Now we're talking. Wait, you never had that until about four years ago. That's true. I, ne I never had a small. I'm, I'm a city boy. We don't have fires. I mean, only fires I ever saw was an apartment buildings were on fire. Oh, man. <laughs> you don't have a fireplace. Went, once a year, we went up to the Catskills. They built a fire for the city. You know, for, the, for, for the city kids, you got to see a pool. You got to see fires. It was a very big experience. All right. So... The, so the question we're going to deal with is, have you ever experienced a tangible result of delayed gratification? Tangible, have you ever experienced tangible uh, result of delayed gratification? Because usually delayed gratification is, I don't do it now for the later. But the question is, what, what if the later takes a very long time? What if the later is way um, later? The problem is, these days we live in the era of now. Instant everything and I, I need I need to have it now if I don't have it now it's it's not it, it's your don't worry jo join the rest of society the but but that but that's the way it is but what if I tell you listen here don't don't live in the now wait for the later but what if the later doesn't come what, what if the later is gonna come in a very very long time you might not even be alive to experience it but it's coming would you still invest the whole idea of investing is to get a return. The Gemara tells us the story of a guy who was planting a tree. And there's a Tana, I forget his name, said, what kind of tree are you planting? So he told him, this, said, how long does it take to, say, to fully mature and grow fruit? 70 years. 70 years, <laughs> you're not gonna be alive in 70 years. So I'm not planting it for me, I'm planting it for, planting it for my, my kids, my grandkids. So the reason why that's a story is because most of us, we have no problem putting away and everything else. But if I told you, you know, it's, the, the reward is going to happen later on. When later on, way later on. It's going to happen. But you're still going to invest. This is the concept we tell with the mitzvah. It's, it says we can't fully comprehend the value of a mitzvah. When are you going to fully comprehend it? Oh, way later, when Mashiach comes, and then, so when, when a person passes away, then the Shema goes up to the Garden of Eden, then it experiences a little bit, but it really will only appreciate it when Mashiach comes. You know, well, like, like, like the old joke, a guy goes to a doctor and says, what's the secret for a long life? The doctor says, do you smoke? No. Do you drink? No. Do you run around with girls? No. You, you, you do drugs? No. The doctor says, so why do you want to live long for, right? What's the, what's, the, what, what's the purpose of doing a mitzvah if the whole thing we're going to get is only way later? Who knows when we're going to even re uh, realize it? Yeah, but when you do a mitzvah, you shouldn't expect any return. Sure. Oh, I wouldn't. But there is a return. I mean, the Torah does promise us return. Yes, right. But you don't do it because you're expecting it. You understand what I mean? But I'm not going to do a mitzvah today because I don't expect somebody is going to give it right back to you're, me. So your the term your is called lishma. To do it for the sake of the mitzvah. But it's a high level. I mean, yes, every person should try to 
to live at that level. God commanded you to do it, and that should be enough for you. What happens? But the Torah does speak to us on our level, on, on, on a regular person's level, and says, if you do the Torah, I'm going to give you physical bounty, and I'll give you peace and everything else, and all these things, and, and a close relationship with God, and yada, yada, yada. But, but, it's, but the prophet says, it's not gonna, it's not, now it's way later. So let's get into let, let's get into the parsha. We'll learn a lesson from the uh, from the portion of the week. This week's Torah portion we have the construction of the tabernacle. Tabernacle I found out today is Latin for tent. I never even knew. I thought it was a made up word. Yeah. I always thought it was a Christian word, but okay. Yeah. I told you about the tabernacle. It was a box in a church. Yeah. It's, I found out today it's Latin for tent. Huh? Well, which makes sense because the Mishkan. Is, is many times called the tent of meeting. Oh hell, it's called a tent. It, it makes sense, and it goes through the whole the whole thing. But but in the beginning of the parsha, it starts off saying, text them one. Moshe gathered everybody after the whole story of the golden calf, and and it's after Yom Kippur, Moshe gathers Jewish people and says, "This is what God commanded you: seven days you work, seven day you may not work, um, and whoever whoever works in Shabbos, um, he, he's going to get it, and you should not you should not have any fire." Kindle in the fire, and then it starts with the whole uh, verse four. Take from everyone the, uh, the donations, and you have gold and silver and copper, and, and the different wools and the oils and and all that. That's how the beginning. That, that, uh, that's how the beginning of the parsha uh, uh, leads off. Now, the Mishkan was a, was a te- was a temporary structure. Always was, always was meant to be. It was never supposed to be a, a permanent structure. This week, Usher asked me, my son Usher asked me, are we allowed to go up on Mount Sinai? If, let's say we know where, where, where it is. Are we allowed to go up on Mount Sinai? No. Sure. Why not? There's no prohibition. Okay, in fact, in the Torah, it says. It says in the Torah. Only at, during that... Event you can't go up afterwards. Torah says when you hear the sound of the shofar, you can go up on the on the mountain. What's the significance? Because the Torah was never supposed to remain on Mount Sinai. The Torah is supposed to travel with the Jewish people. So, too, let's say you found out today. Uh, they're doing research in, in, in the, um, the, the Mishkan was in the city of Shiloh, I guess in English Shiloh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. For 369 years. Let's say you found out the exact place where the Mishkan was. Are you allowed to go in that place? Why not? Say that again. Are you allowed to go in the exact place of the Mishkan? No. Yes. Yeah. It's, not, it's no longer there. No, so I mean, you can't go in the place of the Mishkan of English. You're not allowed to go on, on, on the Temple Mount. Even when the Temple is not there. Because the, temp, the, the Tabernacle, the Mishkan was always supposed to be temporary. It was never meant as a permanent home, even though it stood for a long time in one place, whatever it is. Well, there were two versions of the tabernacle. There was the wooden version in, in the desert, and then there was the stone version with material covers. That was in the land of Israel. But it was always temporary. They knew it was going, it was going to be dismantled, destroyed. Same thing, by the way, with the temple. Do you know when King Solomon built the temple? He built it with escape hatches and tunnels to hide, to hide the items. Why? Because he knew it was going to be destroyed. You, you, you know? Did not know. It makes sense, sense to plan ahead. It makes sense to plan ahead. Right? A rainy day, what they, a rainy day account? What do they call that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Rainy day fund. Rainy day fund. So, Rush fund. The, so, so the question is, so the question is, if we know it's going to be destroyed, why go through the whole effort of building the Mishkan uh, and building two temples, it seems as it's wasted effort. You know it's going to be destroyed. Wh- why bother? Because it can't be rebuilt if it isn't destroyed. So you have why to build, build it so but, it can be rebuilt. But the whole idea is that we, we're looking forward to the... Th- you, you, no, you're gonna, we're going to touch on that point a little later. But the whole we know that when Shiach comes, we're going to have a temple. It's, it's a, well, it's the third temple. Um, and everything's going to be... You know, you have to do, we're going to read some... We're going to read some... Uh, some text about it. But how about say, guys, unless you can do it perfectly, don't do it. Why waste your time? Because then you don't do anything. 
maybe. May okay, so we're let's. We're not perfect, so we can't make something that's perfect. So. Okay, so let's get into this messianic time a little. We're going to talk about messianic time, and we're going to contrast it with the current time, the, the, the exile, and then we'll come back to this. We're going to go off what seems to be a tangent, but it's not. Sometimes it's uncontrolled, sometimes it's controlled. This is going to be a controlled experiment. What's going to happen when Mashiach comes? What's the difference between Mashiach times and now? Mishikah is in order. Huh? Mishikah. Everybody's crazy, and then when he shows up, people are going to have order. So everyone, everyone so goes. It's going to be like that, snap of a finger. Well, exactly. By the way, um, how it's going to happen is is interesting. But if you see, but if you see in text number two, that prophet Isaiah says that we're going to go from being unaware. To aware. So the Avaya and and the glory of God will be revealed, and 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 all the flesh shall see. And we talk about this, this is a very important concept. In Rosh Hashanah, we talk about this, you see in text three. Um, that's from the text of Rosh Hashanah. And text number four, the um the Rebbe Ashab says that doesn't only mean that human beings will, will, will perceive its creator. But text number four, the Rebbe Rashab says that even the animals, um, it says, Viro Kabasar, it says, the, the prayer that all flesh will see, even animals will recognize the creator. As the prayer of Rosh Hashanah continues, that says, Viyavin Kol Yitzur, that every created being will perceive. Basically, what that means is there's going to be a heightened awareness of godliness, not only amongst human beings, amongst humanity. It is reflected in the prophecy of Isaiah that the lion will lie with the with the kid, and the leopard the lion will lie with the lamb, and the leopard with the with, with the kid. Right? Um, I mean, there, there won't only be peace in, in in the human among the human world. Even in amongst the animal kingdom, there'll be there'll, there'll be peace. Now, how's it going to happen? Is is Mashiach going to spread some pixie dust? Yeah. 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 All right. Of course. Yeah. No, it wouldn't be pixie dust. It would be Mashiach dust. Mashiach dust, exactly. Mashiach dust. Yeah, Mashiach dust, yeah. Okay, I'm cool with that. You're cool with that? Yeah. Yeah. And he won't use a hoover to get it. In the and, uh, you know, you might some, you have some schmutz. <laughs> 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 By the way, when I, was, when I was young, I first started as a rabbi, right? I grew up in Crown Heights. I didn't know anything about Christianity. So I go to visit a doctor, and I see one of his people. Work there has some black schmutz over here. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> I had no idea. I said, Yeah, your forehead's, your forehead's dirty. I had no idea. What do I know? <laughs> and you didn't try and clean it up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. The, the more fun is to ask them why. Uh, wait, wait, let's, let's get into it now. So the Alter Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe says that everything that's going to happen in the Messianic times is not independent. It's just going to happen like boom. It's going to be one reality, and all of a sudden we're going to go through a portal of some kind. I don't know some uh, some uh, wormhole. wormhole, wormhole, parallel universe, or so, uh, quantum leap, quantum leap, oh. or. or, or Whatever, whatever, uh, two thousand leagues under the sea, whatever that kind of thing. The what's going to happen is actually based on our our work. It's actually based on our service here. Look at text number five. This is actually from Tanya. This is chapter thirty-seven. I know now we're holding chapter thirteen, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, so now, this ultimate perfection of messianic era at the time of the resurrection of the dead, meaning the revelation of God's infinite energy in this physical world. And here goes the important part, is hinged upon our actions and divine service throughout the period of exile. For it is the mitzvah itself that causes its reward. Atarab is explaining there in Tanya. It says the reward of a mitzvah is a mitzvah. What does that mean? The reward of the mitzvah is not that you get candy, you get pizza, an ice cream, although that'd be nice. The reward is... It's falafel. Trust me. Falafel. There you go. You're already thinking about Purim and the shark. I got that. Um, the, reward, the reward is the connection to God. Now, we can, Alter Rebbe explains it, that we can truly appreciate now, but later uh, we, uh, we, um, we, we, uh, we will. So, if it's only going to happen a long time from now, 
Why bother doing it now? Hey, hey, Ron. Hey, Ron, how are you? Um, Ron became the most popular guy because every time he comes, he comes with food. In this case, it looks like he's got a bottle. Nice. Even better. Um, so, so the, so the, um, so the question, the question we're facing is, why, why start now? You can't see the effect of a mitzvah today. This is, you know, it, why do it? Because this is the concept of investing. This is the concept of the guy planting the tree. Investing now, and when Mashiach comes, you, uh, you're going to, you, you, you're going to see a return on, on your investment. So now, the question is, that's nice. But how do, but don't you want to, you know, even in your IRA, your 401k, you could log in and see how your portfolio is doing. Even they can't. It's usually depressing. I don't need Harvard. Harvard. You don't need Harvard. The question is, how does it how does it help us? How does it help us now? So how does it motivate us now? So there's a verse by King Solomon. This is in text number six here. There's a verse in King Solomon. And you see text number six. And remember your creator is page one fifty three. Remember your creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come, and years arrive. About you will say, I have no desire. Basically, uh, and the simple explanation of the verse, King Solomon saying, when you're young and you have energy and you have an open mind, that's the time to learn. That's the time to get, you know, to do teshuvah. That's the time to really get into the habit of doing mitzvot. The person gets older, it's harder. Come to shul, I can't. I have, I have all these other things I have to do. You know, do this. But once we get older and set in our ways, it's a lot harder to adapt a new, a new lifestyle. But when you're young, it, it, it's easy. That's the regular uh, verse. But the Gemara says this verse is actually alluding to Messianic times. Take a look at the Gemara Shabbos. This is text number seven. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar Amen. Shimon ben Elazar says, Perform mitzvahs while you still find opportunities and you have financial means. And you are still under your own control. As King Solomon in his wisdom says, And remember your Creator in the days of your youth before the difficult days come. This refers to the old age. And the years arrive at which you will say, I have no desire. This refers to the messianic era in which there'll be no merit or nor liability. So King Solomon is saying here, gotta they say in Yiddish, gotta chaparaim. Chaparaim means? No. No, chaparaim? Yiddish? No? Chaparaim means you gotta grab the opportunity. Chab means to grab. You gotta, you, you, you gotta grab the opportunity now because later, you know, you know it's, uh, I, I, I always give the example, if you, if you went in to somebody and says, I got this genius idea, let's invest in a company called Apple. Hmm. Yeah, you, you, you're 40 years late. <laughs> yeah. now, now's not, now it's not the time. So Mashiach comes, so now all the famous big companies, Tesla, Apple, I don't know which other companies are doing well. I don't play the market. You know, the Rebbe was not a fan of playing the market, did you know? They're, they're, I, I have some very limited stock investment, <laughs> and they're all losing. So what good is it? Yeah. yeah. So I'm out about know. twenty bucks now. Twenty I bucks? What? Well. I don't have any real stocks anywhere. I used to work for companies, and they gave me oh, extra discount for buying stuff. I invested in yeah. good yeah. lines. Buy it. Yeah. So okay, you know what the story with those? Uh, what did you do? Just save? Yeah. Invest in something else. Yeah. Yeah. Ever said not, not, it, it, to invest in something else, not stocks. There's a video of a guy asking the Rebbe. Rebbe, Rebbe wasn't a fan of stocks. Um, so, so, we, so here we're here we're davening for for Mashiach. Every, oh, I hate that thing. One thing. Here we're davening for Mashiach every, every single day. So, what is it? How could Mashiach, how could the Gemara put the words "I have no desire"? How could it frame those words? And the verse says, "I have no desire," as the days referring to Mashiach. Shouldn't it be the opposite that Mashiach comes. We're going to look back at the days of exile and say goodbye. Nice to have known you. How could we? How could the Gemara say we're going to talk about the days of Mashiach as I have no desire for them? It seems it should be the other way around. We're looking forward to the days of Mashiach. Oh, I can't wait till Mashiach comes mm -hmm. and everything's going to be great. But the Gemara seems to flip the narrative on its head and say no. Now are the desired days. The Mashiach days are are the undesirable days. It doesn't seem to make sense. What are we praying for? We had the Amida, and Amida we pray for Mashiach multiple times. 
How can it be that those are the days that, that they're not uh, 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 desirable? So what's the, what's the difference between Mashiach times and exile times? The difference is that in Mashiach times, there's clarity. In exile times, everything is convoluted, which makes making the good, the right decision harder. When there's clarity, making the right decision makes you normal. If you, right? When things are convoluted, then it's, they're making the right decisions a lot harder. So the goodness, we, this is not exactly the subject of tonight's class, but the goodness in the world is, is um, embedded there. It's only that, only, it's only there's a veil. Sometimes we don't see the value of, of investing. That, that veil is called the spirit of impurity. So by the way, when, I'm asking you a question. When the world was created, was it good or bad? I don't. It's good. You're not being. Uh, your life doesn't depend on it. You can guess wrong. Nothing's going to happen. Hey. Was the world good or bad? Yes, it was, Hashem it was said it was good. The world was good. <clears throat> that means Hashem didn't make it good. Hashem created the world good. That means the world's natural state is good. good, right? Adam and Chava were walking around the Garden of Eden, right? Everything was good. What happened? Because of the sin of the tree of knowledge, a spirit of impurity, a spirit of confusion was imported. I mean, it, it, it's a foreign substance that's, that's, that's made it into the water. And our job is to sort of to filter it out. So when Shiach comes, by the way, it's not, it, we're so used to the world, the, the, the water being polluted that we, we don't understand what clean water looks like. We think, we think clean water is an is a, uh, unrealistic goal. Terra comes and says, no, the water was clean. The, the, ter- the world was clean and pure. We, we, we made the world the Hudson River. Did you see that story, by the way, one time a guy? Oh, no, there was a, uh, it was in India, I think. A guy wanted to show that he could drink the water from the, what's it called? Bush. And, he, and, and he drank yeah. it and he had to be rushed to the hospital. In Bofo. It happened, Bofo, re- India. It happened yeah. recently. Oh, how, how recently? I don't know. I saw the club I don't, not too long ago. The guy had to be rushed to the hospital, he almost died. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this guy died. Oh, this guy died. This guy died. This was, this was probably, what, about 15, 15 20 years ago? No, no, no. There was, sorry, there, there was something else. But, uh, but, um, but, the point, uh, but the point is, you see, imagine, you see, imagine you grew up in New York and, you, and your only existence is in New York City. No, no I can't imagine that. All right. And, and no, to you, no. and to you, Water is the Hudson River, the East Side River. It's dirty. It's polluted. Yeah. So someone tells you, someone tells you. The luck hill, the Basher kill. No, why do they call? Why do they water. call it Hell's Gate? But so but then, then someone tells you, you no. Know, only over here, the water's like this. But there's a concept of clean, pure water. You don't need. A, you don't need a. You know, a plant. You could just. You thinking can be, can be. What? Can be, and you say no. And, then, and, and one day they're going to invent the machine. One day it's going to return the water to its natural state. And you're thinking, it's been like this for so long, it can't be. But the, but the point is, the world, the example is not a perfect one, but the world was created pure. And because, and because of, of human pollution, uh, know, global warming, global cooling, but we, as humanity, we contaminated the world. That, that, that spirituality, godliness, Cannot um, is is not appreciated like it is. So what's going to happen when she comes? Look at text number eight. Uh, the Scharia says, "In the spirit of impurity, I'm going to remove from the land." That Hashem is going to change the nature of the world. No, the nature of the world is good. Hashem is going to remove the pollution. So, and because there's no pollution, all, all of a sudden, choices become crystal clear. There's no, there's, there's no challenge, right? You know, Jackie Mason had a joke. So when Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson fought this guy. I mean, this, it, obviously this this song is dated. I mean, this joke is dated. Um, uh, Mike, that's okay. Most of the audience here is dated. Yeah. Other than Zach, this guy. <laughs> so Ma- Mike, remember it well. Mike Tyson fought this guy. He bit his ear up. No, not, not Evander Holyfield. And the guy lasted Mike Tyson in the ring like 30 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, whatever it is. And he got paid like two, three million dollars. This is like the early, this is like the early 90s. 
And everybody was like, what, $3 million? 30 seconds, and Jackie Mason has a joke. All the Jews next day are, are in the gym. All right. <laughs> hey, how do we do this, right? <laughs> but, 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 so, but the, the idea, the challenge is when there's resistance. When there's no resistance, there's no challenge. It, it, there's no reward. There's no, there's no fun. Let's look, look, let's look at what Nachmanari says. Text number nine. This is from the book of Deuteronomy. So from the time of creation, every person has possessed the power to do as they pleased. To be wicked, the wicked, righteous or wicked. By the way, there's a whole argument. Will free will exist when Mashiach comes? It's a good question. It's an argument. It's a debate. Free will, if free will could only, could only, it is between good and bad. If everything is good, there's no free will. Some people say, okay, there's not going to be any free will. Yeah, not going to be free will. Yeah. Free will means, am I going to have an ice cream sundae or am I going to have a, a, a flimsy? You know? I, I have a bad news, Mashiach. You, you can have a choice between two good things. So another, an, another opinion says there's going to be choice, the free choice is going to be between two good things. Am I still recording? Because this thing is getting loose. Yeah, you're still. I don't recording. want to touch it because last time I touched it and messed up everything. The last time you touched it, it fell apart. Yeah. Um, if, if, if fingers of destruction. Um, so anyway, back up. So the, the, this grant of free will applies likewise to the entire Torah period, so that people can gain merit upon choosing good and, um, and punishment for choosing evil. But in the Messianic era, Nachmanides continues, the choice of their genuine good will be natural. The heart will not desire the improper and will have no craving whatsoever for it. This is reflected on the verse that King Solomon says, and years arrive about what she will say, I have no desire. It doesn't mean I have no desire for Messianic <coughs> times. It means in the Messianic times, you won't have desire. Uh, when there will be um, n neither merit nor, nor liability. See, when Mashiach comes, there's no return on investment, and there's no, and there's no punishment either. There's no gain and there's no loss, because there's no risk. And you're going to be lazy. You're not going to be lazy. No, you'll be motivated because the good will be right in front of you. Oh, okay. But you're not going to be rewarded for doing good because it's, it's self-evident to do good. And, it's not, and you're not going to be rewarded for, for abstaining from bad because, obviously. Um, for the Messianic era, there will be no desire, no evil desire in humanity. Rather, every person um, will naturally perform the, the good deeds. Thus, there will be neither merit nor liability for merit and liability are dependent on desire. All right. So, when, when someone's breathing, we don't say, you're breathing very nicely. Look at the way that guy drinks water. That's, that's, why? We do it with children. We do it with children, right? <laughs> why? Because it comes, because it comes natural. You don't get credit for something that comes natural. So Mashiach comes, doing a mitzvah is going to become natural. It's a, uh, everything, is going to, everything is going to be, um, everything's going to be easy. So we could look at the, the period now of exile as a time of investment. Of an investment means when there's uncertainty. If you have a certain, that, that's why if you go to a bank and open a savings account, what's your return? 1%. Zero one. point. You're lucky yeah. if you get that. Point one. Point one, right? Unless if you go to an online bank, they're giving three to four. Three to four. I saw one for about six percent about three months ago. So I'm saying, but, but, that's but for a CD. But say, but, yeah. but but why? Because if you're for sure going to get your money back, then that's not an investment. That, that's not a risk. When is there more of a risk? When is the chance you might lose? Yeah. So gallus gallus is a time of investing. Why? Because it's in time of uncertainty. What's the famous thing in uh, in investing? Buy low, sell high, right? Mm -hmm. But when, but why is the stock low? Because no one believes in it. Because right. there's uncertainty. If if the stock, if everyone believed in the company, then the stock wouldn't be low. So it, 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 you know the famous story with uh, with Unculus. Uh, Unculus. I've told the story before. This is off the subject. But the story popped into my head. So. Uh, he was an, uh, his nephew of uh, Emperor Nero. And he was interested in Judaism. But he couldn't tell his, his nephew, his uncle, that he was interested in Judaism. So he went to his uncle and said, give me, give me advice. He says, go out into the world, find something 
that people don't like, but it's really precious. Basically, buy low, sell high. He went and converted to Judaism. And the whole story. Finally, uh, you know, he sent them, and and, and uncles con uh, convinced the first set of guards to convert second. Finally, Nero got him in front of him. So how can you do this to me? How can you, you know, go against us and 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 uh, convert to Judaism? He said, "What are you talking about? I followed your advice." The the t Judaism and Torah is a special product. No one else believes in it. So I bought low, and when Mashiach comes, I'm going to sell high. I'm investing exactly exactly um, what you said, um, and this is what, and this is what um, the Gemara says. It says in the in the Torah, Hayom Lasosam today to do it. Now today this time is a time of doing. Uh, look at text number ten. The, the Gemara says, Rishon ben Levi says, what is the meaning of the verse? You shall keep the commandments and the statutes and 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 the, and the judgment that I command you today to do them. So he said, it means that today is the time to do them in this world. Tomorrow is not the time to do. It says, I forgot somewhere, yeah, I think it's in Kabbalah, it says that the souls will give up, the angels, sorry, will give up anything just to come down and say, Amen Yehei That's why, this is up your alley, when you go to a cemetery, what do we have to do? We have to tuck in our tzitzit. As to not rub it in their face that they can't do a mitzvah and you're not you're not allowed to walk in the cemetery with tefillin, remember that law, or with a sefer Torah, you're not allowed to. Why? Because you can't rub it in their face that we I can do a mitzvah and you can't. So now is the time to to, uh, to do. Later, later, uh, uh, later we uh, we we receive we receive uh, we, we reward. We are all standing on the investments our parents and grandparents made. No one no one's independent. This whole idea of a self-made man and whatever they, they, they put forth in Hollywood or Forbes 500, whatever that's supposed to mean. But the reason why we're here today is because the investments our, our parents and grandparents made. In fact, the greatest investment a person can make is in, is in the next generation. So I like, I like that story with the, with the tree. The guy didn't see the, uh, the, the return, but he, he planted it for his children. So there's a story. A, a guy came over to, I can't remember which Rebbe, and said, if Mashiach hadn't, hasn't come until now, and the previous generations were such great men, women, the entire generations were a bunch of bumps. How's Mashiach going to come now? Good question, right? If they didn't deserve it, yeah. how are we going to deserve it? So the, the answer is, because not every he answered him, he, if I'll, give you, I'll give you a, a, a parable. So there's once a, a giant who had a child, and, and they wanted to see the king. And they came to the palace, and there was a great wall around the palace. It was higher than the, the, than the eyes of the giant. The giant put his child on his shoulders and said, you tell me what you see. The rabbi said, said, we are standing on the shoulders of our parents, of a giant, we're standing on giant's shoulders. You know, we tend to think of ourselves, we live in this separate spectrum of time. Judaism doesn't look at it that way. We look at it, it's a chain, interlocking chain. Time is moving, progressing. And we're standing on the efforts of our fathers and our mothers. So... So we, 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 they, they invested in us, and we are investing further. And Mashiach comes, it's going to be a return on that massive, on the, on that massive uh, investment. But now's the time to get busy. You sit, in the, you sit here and you, and you kratz. You know what kratz means? Kratz means procrastinate. And you, and you, and you waste your time doing other things. I'm sure there are parables, right, with the grasshopper and the ants, but the ants worked in, during the summer, right? There are a lot of ideas. Now is the t now is the time to to build a nest egg. Now is the time to work, because later uh, late is too late. Look look how the the previous Rebbe puts it, such such powerful words. Text number eleven on page one fifty six. He says, "When Mashiach comes, maybe speedily in our time of main, we will long, we will miss the days of exile." Can you imagine? And he wrote this on. Uh, in, the, in the middle of the summer, 1943. This is the middle of the Holocaust. Right? 
And he says, when Mashiach comes, we're going to miss the days of exile. Then we will, then we will truly feel the stress of having neglected work at a, a spiritual service. Then we will indeed feel the deep pain caused by our lack of spiritual service. These days of exile are the days of, of service, spiritual service, to prepare ourselves for the coming Mashiach and we be speedily um, in our days. So how do you, um, so how, how do you, motiv how you motivate it? It's not like a company you don't know it's gonna return. You got the head of the Federal Reserve, so to speak, God telling you guys, listen, listen invest in here, I promise you it's gonna return, you're gonna get a good return. That should motivate you. Yeah, you, you, maybe you can't experience it now, but you're, gonna, you're going to experience it. And imagine you don't listen, and everyone else is, is sitting in their Ferraris and their Bentleys, and you're still, and you're still driving a 1988 uh, Pontiac. You know, you know what Pontiac is? <laughs> Oldsmobile? Yeah. Right. Right, Four, four, two. How about Nash? Yeah. Yeah. Nash That's, Rambler. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was... Yeah, she did. Yeah. She did the uh, tune up on a Nash on a Rambler one. She changed all the spark plugs. See, see, Bob, see but there was one minor problem. She changed one bank of four, and then she went in the house, washed her hands, and then came out again. And did What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I had a rat and like the, I had one that was the worst kind of. <laughs> so the Rebbe said, "Look at the Rebbe said, text number twelve. So Mashiach comes. Um, he says he quotes his father-in-law. He says we're gonna." And we say, oi, oi, how, how foolish, how foolish we're going to grab our heads and shout, gewald, oi vey. We, we could have done so much more and we, and, we missed our, and we missed our chance. Therefore, even though now we don't perceive the full value of our actions, the knowledge that there's going to be a return, that should motivate you. So we got to add in learning Torah, and we got to add in the observance of mitzvahs in a matter um, exponentially greater than they're doing until now. It's not suffice by adding only a little bit, or even a proportionally great number, for the time will come when it will be too late. Rather, we must increase in an infinite manner, meaning a matter of self-sacrifice that stems from the very essence of our souls. So we are locked into a exile mentality. The, ra the righteous people of our time are telling you, listen, there's a lot of th things a lot greater. You can't just be locked into this reality. Let me tell you a story. You ever heard, you ever heard of the, a man named the Chayza of Lublin? Oh. The Chayza, the seer of Lublin. His name was Yaakov, Yaakov Yitzchak. And he was a very, very great man. He was called the seer, the Chayza, because there was nothing that was blocked from him. People would go to him and ask blessings. And he died a very, very poor man. Very rich in action, but he, he didn't keep any worldly possession. The only thing he kept was a Shabbos belt, um, I think a, a, a robe, something for Shabbos, and, um, and a Shabbos clothing, a belt, and a clock. And his son inherited these three items. One time his son was traveling, and it started pouring rain, and it was, it was, uh, it was out of control. The roads were muddy. Finally, he sees a house, and I had his mezuzah. He goes there, he had to be there for three days. This guy had no money to pay. So he offered the person in the house, you want, you want this belt, this clothing, so what do we need? So I'll take the clock. He had to get, give up the clock. A, um, a little, uh, some years later, there was a, a great man, his name was Yisachar Doiv of Rodvich. He was a, a, a tzaddik, and he stayed in his house. And he said, this house, this clock, I said, he said he loved this clock. He would dance to the... He said, tell me, what's, he asked the host, what's with the story with this clock? So he said, so they, they, they told him the story. He said, oh, now I understand. Everyone else's clock counts the, the, the moments of exile. The Chayza's clock counts down to Mashiach. I don't know what that means exactly, but it, it, the, the holy people, they're pushing us. The tzaddikim of our generation, all the generations are pushing us. Do more, do more, do more. They're telling us, you, got, you, you have to, you have to invest. So everything you do now, even though maybe sometimes you, you, it, might, it might seem temporary, like the temples, right? So King Solomon built the temples. And I said, you see in text number 13, the, 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 the Maimonides writes that when King Solomon built the temples, he built tunnels because he knew that one day it would be destroyed. Like Michael J said, anything that's human made is temporary. Only godly things are, are, are eternal. 
So why bother building something if you know it's going to be destroyed? Because the answer is because the third temple is not independent of the first temple and the second temple and the, and, and the tabernacle. So the first tabernacle was small. The second tabernacle was a little larger. The, the, first, temp, the, first, um, the first temple was uh, a little larger. Second te- it stood for 410 years. Second temple was larger, stood for 420 years. Meaning all our actions, we stand on giant shoulders. We are building upon one and the other. You can't have the temple of Mashiach comes without all, everything that comes it comes, be, uh, it comes before. You see, there's a very interesting uh, medrash. You see text number 14. That, you know, on Shabbos, you're not, you're not allowed to build. Are you, are you allowed to destroy? On Shabbos, you're not allowed to do any good thing constructive. Destruct, 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 uh, destroying something is not constructive. Seems inappropriate. Again, no, destruction leads to building. It depends. If destruction is to vent your anger, then it's constructive, right? Because they feel better. <laughs> but really, not really. Um, if, uh, but, and, and, um, but if, if destroyed for no reason, then it's, you're not supposed to do it, but you're not punished. There's, no, there's a law. You're not allowed to destroy a shul. Unless. No. Unless you're going to build a new one. Unless you're going to build a new one. So the destruction is part is part of the, is part of the rebuild. So yes, it's a tragedy the first base of English was destroyed, and it's a tragedy the second base of English was destroyed. All true, but it's all laying the groundwork for the third temple. Look at the medrash in text fourteen, here. He says, "Omar Rav." Rav says, "A lion, an arie." You, you got you got to pay attention to the Hebrews. Mm-hmm. Uh, arie came in the month of arie and destroyed Ariel. What's the, the arie is? Is King Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon, who the verse said, compares it to a lion? He came in the month of Arie, because the zodiac for Av is a lion, is a, is a Leo, and he destroyed Jerusalem, which is called Ariel. This happened in the next paragraph, so that Arie can come in the month of Arie and rebuild Ariel. The Arie is a holy one, who in in, in the Navi Amos said a lion has roared, and he will rebuild Jerusalem in the month of Arie. And, and, and the prophet Jeremiah prophesied, I will return the morning into joy. And he will rebuild Ariel, and that is the, um, the, that, that is the best in English. So, let's just tie in one last point. In, begin, in the beginning of the parsha, before the construction of the temple, of the tabernacle, it said about Shabbos. What, what's, that, what's, what's Shabbos got to do with the price of tea in China? So basically, it means that you can't violate Shabbos to build the temple. That's what it means. As you see, Rashi says in text fifteen, but but there's a lot, but there's a lot more. Medrash tells us that there's going to be six millennia of exile. The seventh millennia is going to be Messianic times. Seventh day you work, six days you work, and the seventh day you don't work. These, we're in six days now, baby. You got to work. You got to accumulate. You, you got to accumulate action because um, Shabbos. And we actually, we pray, there's, there's a reference that Messianic times is like uh, Shabbos. We see in text 16, this is what we say in, in, in Brachat Amazon. We say, Yoim Shekulei Shabbos. Here. And the verse will less inherit the day that'll be all, that'll be all, all, all like Shabbos. So now we're getting close. Now we're ready 5, 7, 8, 4. So close to Friday. No, sorry, we're close to Shabbos. We're almost finished the sixth millennium already. You better, you better, you better chaperai. You know what? Right before Shabbos, remember chaperai means grab the opportunity. And when did, my friend used to have a magnet on his fridge. If it wasn't for the last minute, nothing would get, would get done, right? Yeah, yeah. When do you check right. the area, and when he start, yeah, right. Right. Friday afternoon. So, so now it's Friday afternoon. Now you, we, now we really, um, and, and and now we really have to hustle. Now we really, so it's uh, um, Josh Gordon. If you haven't listened to his ta- his classes, hustle, hustle, move a muscle. You gotta, you gotta, you, you have to invest if you want to return. And, and, and now's the time. If you want to really appreciate Shabbos, it says in the Gemara, he who invests in Shabbos during the week will, 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 um, will, will appreciate and love Shabbos. Shabbos is not just the day that comes around. If you look forward to Shabbos and you do things for Shabbos, and Shabbos comes like, ah, same thing with Shia comes. If you invest, the tefillin, the tzedakah, the prayer, the learning Torah, then when Sheikh comes, then it's going to be, and, and I'll end up with one story. 
and lead into the next class, to the Hasidic <laughs> class. You know, some of the things we learn in Tanya, I don't know Barbara will appreciate this, a little bit lofty and above her head, right? Oh, you better believe it. Right. So one time a guy went to, oh, uh, one time a guy went to the Tzemach Tzedek, said, well, what are we learning all this stuff for? We don't, we don't really understand what's flying. It's all above our head. So Tzemach Tzedek said, I'll give an example, it says, there's once a guy trying to listen to a conversation on the other side of the door. And because of the door, he's only able to pick up Bits and pieces. Nothing actually really made sense. Only bits and pieces. But when the door opened, he said, "Ah, now everything makes sense. This is what this is what this means." So that's what learning chassidus is. You're investing in your and you're laying the foundation. Yeah, it's a lot of things go uh, blow past you. But when Shiach comes, if you invest in it, you're going to appreciate uh, um, a lot more. And with that, we'll lead into the next class. Tanya, thank you so much for coming. Next week, to to be advised. I can kid you in, in the class.